You wrote that the myriad ways in which various arms of government violate our property rights often goes uncontested, even by conservatives. The most egregious violation of property occurs without a single tax or law being passed through the legislative branch. Moreover, not a single arm is drawn and not a single bullet is fired in order to facilitate this confiscation of property. The culprit, the United States Federal Reserve. They create new currency units from nothing, devaluing the existing supply of currency, thereby redistributing wealth from savers of the currency to those who receive the new units first. This happens without our permission. We don't get a vote and there's nobody within the central bank whose role is to represent the interest of American citizens. This is absolutely unequivocally taxation without representation. This is a deceitful theft of human property, which is arguably more evil than a direct outright seizure of property, because at least in the latter instance, the victim is aware they are being robbed. Why is it so difficult <laughs> for people to understand that inflation is theft? Why, what, what is this conditioning that has been so successful in preventing people from just seeing what appears to be rather obvious to most Bitcoiners? Because in the mind of most people, they think wealth is dollars, right? Wealth mm. isn't dollars. And so when they see the number in their bank account go up, maybe it went up 5% a year, inflation's 10% a year, they feel wealthier. They're not. Bitcoiners know they're not. It's And it's simple math, right? If your dollars lost 10% purchasing power and you gained 5% more dollars, you are objectively more poor, mm -hmm. right? You have to to really think about what wealth is. It's, it's control of your time. It's assets. It's family. It's physical materials. It's all of these things. Money and dollars are just a means to facilitate trade and, and storing value through time, right? The actual currency units themselves, they, they're only wealth in so far as that you can trade them in the future for other goods. Mm -hmm. And so there's just this, this misconception in, in people's minds that when you know, they have a high yield savings account or, you know, their treasury bonds are giving them three, four five percent a year that they're getting wealthier when they're they're actually not. And this I've always said this. The reason two percent is the Federal Reserve's target inflation rate. It's seemingly arbitrary, but it's just the boiling frog theory. Mm. That's, I think, the fastest they can devalue the currency without people really noticing. We saw in 2021 inflation. Well, CPI is not a measure of inflation, but I digress. Mm. CPI went over 2% and people started to notice. They could feel it. They could go to the grocery store and they knew they were getting robbed. Like they, they understood that inflation is bad. I am becoming more poor. But when CPI or inflation is less than 2%, it's just so gradual and so slow. They don't even notice. They don't even bother. But if you use the rule of 72, I mean, you lose half your wealth in about three decades, even with 2%, quote unquote, mild, normal inflation. Mm. And what, so is this part of the PSYOP that is fiat currency slash central banking is just getting people to believe that inflation is a necessary part of a healthy economy? That's certainly, if it's not directed, it is ultimately what happens. And I study economics in university and it was Keynesian nonsense. I tried to push back on this idea of 2% inflation being necessary, but I found like any sort of academic study, you can only cite other quote unquote academic resources. Mm -hmm. So it ends up just being this kind of like big circle jerk of, of <laughs> academics promoting inflation and promoting mm -hmm. this idea, right? If you think about, you know, their logic, the Keynesian logic is, oh, people knowing that prices would go down in deflation, they're not going to buy today. So that's going to cause economic catastrophe, mm -hmm. right? Well, look at technology, look at, at iPhones, you can buy the next better iPhone next year, right? And in a way, that's deflation. Maybe it costs the same price, but you're getting a better deal. Does that stop people from buying iPhones today or cars today? No, like, mm. you know, you could wait and buy the 2026 car next year, but people are gonna buy the 2025 because they want it now because the future is uncertain, right? Imagine saying to your child, yeah, you don't get a Christmas present this year because it's gonna be 5% cheaper next year, right? <laughs> Nobody thinks that way. People buy what they need. And so this idea that, that you need inflation to incentivize spending is just total bull crap. Like I came down here, I wanted to come to Florida, right? I, this, I wanna do things, I wanna spend money. I don't need Jerome Powell, I don't need the Federal Reserve to incentivize me to do that. 
I want to buy grass fed beef. I want to buy a gym membership. Like I want to take my girl on a nice date. Like I want to do all these things and, and you don't need inflation to incentivize that. Yeah. It seems painfully obvious when you put it that way. It's like, of course, consumption takes care of itself because well, people are alive. They yeah. want to eat. They want to have shelter. They want to take trips. They want to drive cars. Like you don't need any other incentive to consume. Like the consumption is the incentive itself right. Right? to eat and, and live a good life. Like it's nonsense. So it's again, amazing to me that Keynesian economics has managed to perpetrate or, or, or promulgate that narrative. Like, yeah. it's like, I don't know. It's mind boggling. And I think under, with the normal quote unquote normies out there, like, a lot of them outsource their critical thinking to the quote unquote experts. Right. And the Keynesians are viewed as the economic experts. They're the ones that go and work on Wall Street and work in the Federal Reserve and the Treasury and work in academia. And so, you know, Austrian economics, I was never taught at Austrian economics in college. Like I literally found Austrian economics through Bitcoin. I'm like, oh, this, this is just real economics. This is ac yeah. actually makes sense. Right. Yeah. And so the fact that the Keynesians have sort of cornered the academic uh economics domain is and people outsource their thinking to them yeah i think is what sort of allowed this this misconception of inflation to to survive yeah and that this aspect of money printing really makes it look kind of like mind control in a way because if mm. you can print money to then fabricate this pseudoscientific narrative that justifies the printing of money right <laughs> it's like you're actually just you're you're hypnotizing people into becoming your victim yeah and then they, then the victims, it's almost like a Stockholm syndrome or something. Then the victims are like, oh, well, then you said inflation's necessary, so give me some more inflation. Right. Until, as you, you point out, the, the boiling frog gets turned up too hot, as it has been the past four years, and mm -hmm. people are actually feeling it. Yeah. And it's that pain that starts to give people the real information that, oh, wait, maybe inflation's not good for me. Right. Right? It's that I do feel poorer now, even though I have more dollars. Right. Right. Nobody was talking about inflation. I haven't, I haven't looked at the Google trends, but I imagine four or five years ago, it's much lower. You know, what yeah. is inflation versus what it is now? And, and to your point about this sort of hypnotic aspect to it, it, it also applies to traditional savings, right? You ask normal financial advisors, should I buy Bitcoin? No, it's too risky. It's too volatile. Mm -hmm. Buy bonds instead. Mm -hmm. And so through academia, they're pushing that narrative, which ultimately bleeds down to all the the clients and people that store wealth with other people, money managers, financial advisors, et cetera, and they buy the government's debt that gives them more you know, energy and, and time to finance all this stuff, and it's just a loop. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, click here to find more just like it, and here to find our most recent episode. Also, make sure to like this video to help shine light on the corruption of money, and be sure to subscribe to this channel to stay connected.